Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Richmond Downtown Neighborhood Association is working towards helping those struggling with housing. And some Appalachian nonprofits are receiving grants to help launch a new fund for young entrepreneurs. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 632 on November 29th. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, I have to tell you, we've been talking about these cold temperatures today. And yesterday I attempted to go on a walk, <laughs> put on my warm coat, my headband. I was so miserable. I didn't survive very long outside. I could, I could have told you that was a bad <laughs> idea. I know, I was feeling so brave I mean, and it did not work out at all. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a good effort though. I'll, I'll give you that. A for effort, that's for sure. That's right, A for effort. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the forecast currently this morning, and you see Jenkins fairly quiet out there, no major issues. Now, right now, we're going to continue to see a very light traffic pattern as we start the day going into southwest Virginia. But when you head out the door, it's going to hit you real fast. 12 right now in Jonesville, 22 in Prestonsburg, a lot of folks in the teens this morning. We take a look at the temperature difference, and it's double digits everywhere with the exception of Wise, Jacksboro, and Moorhead, and might as well be double digits there. Nine degrees colder than it was 24 hours ago. Now we'll head up. It's going to be a slow climb right around 47 this afternoon. Lots of sunshine, so at least enjoy that. Olivia? All right, thank you, Brandon. The Richmond Downtown Neighborhood Association is working to help those struggling with housing. This Thursday, they will be handing out mittens, hats, scarves, and gloves at Millstone Park. The Richmond Downtown Neighborhood Association is a new group of concerned citizens making up about 10 core members. They say their purpose is to do positive things for the city and not complain about what they say needs to be accomplished. Wherever we feel that there is a need, um, um, we're going to hopefully focus our uh, efforts in that direction. The Richmond Downtown Neighborhood Association is encouraging anyone to join from the community that wants to help. One person is dead after a crash yesterday morning in Whitley County. It happened on Kentucky 92 East. Officials learned a Ford pickup truck crossed the center line, colliding with a Kenworth tractor trailer. 52-year-old Linda Bedford of Pineville was driving the pickup truck and was pronounced dead at the scene. Officials say she was not wearing a seatbelt at the time. A portion of the roadway was closed for several hours yesterday. Multiple police departments are looking for a man who has been missing for more than a week. 34-year-old Logan Stanley was last seen in Dickinson County, Virginia back on November 20th. Stanley is 5 feet 10 inches tall and 180 pounds with dark brown hair and blue-green eyes. He was last seen driving a black Ford EcoSport. If you have any information about the case, you are asked to contact the Dickinson County Sheriff's Office at 276-926-1600. One bank here in the mountains has issued a scam alert in a post on social media. Hyden Citizens Bank officials say some customers have received letters saying they are eligible for a sizable tax refund, with the letter even re referencing the bank. They want to be clear the letters are not from the bank and are likely scams. If you receive one of the letters and have concerns, you are urged to call 606-672. 2344 or come to one of the branches and talk to employees. As many of you know, yesterday was a nationally recognized day of giving known as Giving Tuesday. Every year, millions of acts of generosity are shown on that day. And that includes right here in our region. I spoke to a local business owner about how she is using her boutique to support a local school. GivingTuesday.org says the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, known as Giving Tuesday, was created to encourage people to do good. But as you might agree, we have a lot of great mountain people. 
For example, Julia Smith, who is the owner of Jewels by Julia Boutique, says she simply loves to give. I have always ran my business by the mindset that God has blessed me with this. He's blessed me to be successful. And when I had the opportunity to give back, using my business, I need to do so. And on this Giving Tuesday, it just seems fit for Smith to give 15% of her Tuesday sales to support the Angel Tree Fund at Viper Elementary. Something Family Resource Director Heather Sparkman says means a little more this year. With the merge of Viper and Leatherwood, I had over 90 kids on my Christmas assistance. And with a school of just over 300, that's, that's a lot of kids needing assistance. And with families struggling in the area, it's took, you know, local businesses to step up and, you know, help. Giving folks the opportunity to shop local this season while ensuring all Viper Elementary students have gifts under the tree. Because for some, the holidays are hard. We do have families here in the poverty level, but we do have middle class families also that don't receive government assistance and have to decide when it comes to Christmas, you know, do I buy my family Christmas dinner or do I buy, do I buy my child presents? We're here to bridge those gaps so that, you know, we don't have families going without at Christmas and that we can bring, you know, joy to not only the kids at Christmas, but the family as a whole. Remember, any purchase at Jewels by Julia Boutique on Tuesday makes an impact. So we're hoping for a great turnout so we can give to them and hopefully help them during this time give these families and kids a good Christmas. If you did not make it to Jewels by Julia yesterday, you can also reach out to Perry County Schools and find out specific angel tree needs at each school this holiday season. Three Appalachian nonprofits received a grant from a federal agency that will help launch a new fund. The U.S. Economic Development Administration donated $680,000 towards an angel investment fund. The fund has $1 million ready for private investment, but also potentially $4 million to leverage in capital. Organizer Jeff Marietta says they want to give Eastern Kentuckians opportunities. What we need to do is bring this money and find, make sure it can find its way to Eastern Kentucky because there are a lot of great entrepreneurs, a lot of really incredible projects and work going on, but they don't have that access to that higher risk capital that an angel fund would provide. Marietta says they will also have the ability to reach out to other funding networks that can assist businesses interested. Organizers are working to hire an impact investment coordinator for the fund. Six forty here on this Wednesday morning. The sun is coming up outside the WYMT studios in Hazard. Twenty one out there. One of the warmer spots in the region. We're going to continue to see some of those colder spots across parts of the region as well. Twenty one Hazard Jackson just went back to twenty in Harlan and Pikeville too. Twenty two is the hottest spot in the region in Prestonsburg. Twenty one in Somerset. Everybody else is in the teens this morning. So bundle up and be ready for that. Statewide, got to get to. Paducah and Carbondale to get into the 30s, 19 in Cincinnati, 13 in Ashland, 16 in the Tri-Cities, and Charleston, West Virginia. Out the door forecast we're going to continue to see as the sun comes up. It's going to warm up, only about 47 though today, but after that we're going to see some much warmer air in place as we get ready to wrap up November. Olivia? Thanks, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. We're coming up on 641 still to come on Mountain News this morning. We'll have more on former First Lady Rosalind Carter's funeral today in Plains, Georgia.